Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready for date night and I thought it would be good. We've had like a little catch up, but I kind of want to touch on how I've gone from being a celebrity makeup artist working red carpets, working for big global brands, to becoming a business coach for creative freelancers today as well. So it's a little bit of a get ready with me, another chatty one, kind of story time, get comfy, get drinks, get snacks, get all that good stuff. And spoiler, I am going to be playing with color today. I know, shock horror. I'm obsessed with the uh, Violette Your Paint. You guys know I've talked about these before. So, so good. So I wanted to play with these today. And that is the plan. So if that sounds good, get comfy and keep watching. Okay, so first things first, I had a tiny bit of makeup on earlier today and I'm just gonna work with what's already here to refresh. Generally speaking, in the daytime working from home, I just have a bit of like BB cream on or a little bit of tinted moisturizer. So I feel happy to go in and just work with what's already there. So to start with, I was kind of shopping my makeup stash and I was like, oh, what have I not used for a while that I always come back to? And I'm gonna start with Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish. Flawless Filter, I should say. This is in the shade two and it's still a fave. I just feel like whenever my skin is looking a bit lackluster, this is such a good one for like a quick skin pick me up. So we're gonna start with that. Let me get a little blendy brush, professional as always. And yeah, I just feel like it, it gives a rested look to my skin that we love. First questions first, how? How do you go from being a celebrity makeup artist to becoming a business coach? I can think of this like a food recipe in that it starts with a pinch of frustration, um, a cup of, a desire to destroy, destroy the starving artist narrative and lots of other things which we'll cover inside this video. Okay, sticking with the Charlotte Tilbury theme, I'm gonna go in with a bit of the uh, Beautiful Skin Foundation in shade four. I remember last time I used this, I really liked it, so I'm gonna use it again. So I'm just using my e.l.f., I think this is the ultimate foundation brush. My, uh, the writing has rubbed off, but I'm gonna start with this. And I will say, I really like being able to go in and do my skin first when I'm kind of like gonna do an eye look that's using eye cream. So I'm just gonna start with this. And it's really nice, got a very kind of like elastic finish. Definitely say this is more than a tinted moisturizer. I'd say it's more of a, what do we call it? Like medium coverage, I think is what I would say with this, but I really love the finish. So like I said, to start with, I think after being in the industry for so long as a professional makeup artist and traveling a lot, I was still hearing so many narratives about the right way to be a creative freelancer. And you have to remember first and foremost that the way I differentiate like creative freelancers from regular freelancing is generally speaking, when you're a makeup artist, a photographer, um, stylist, any of those kind of creative jobs, you get paid afterwards. So for a lot of freelancers, like if you have a graphic designer, a lot of the time you get the money up front, then you do the work. Whereas being a creative freelancer, there is so much nuance to your environment, to the problems that I do think are very um, unique to being a creative freelancer in that exact kind of mind frame that, you know, you are billing clients with an expectation of net 30 days, which often turns into 60 days, 90 days. And I think that's why a lot of people are afraid of being freelance because they're like, it feels too unreliable. It doesn't feel consistent enough. And I totally get that. I used to feel the same way. But I think there's so many narratives that come with being a creative freelancer. So there's so many people saying like, oh, for you to book celebrities, you have to have an agent. You need to have a million followers on social media. And I just don't buy into any of that. And my clients really are proof of that now, which is the best thing. But I think there's definitely a few narratives in of itself that I think are super problematic and are a big reason why I felt drawn to the space I'm now in. So I'm not gonna do my concealer till later in case there is any fall down, but I'm gonna go in with this new shade from Violette. This is the uh, Your Paint. The writing is so tiny in this. I think it's Reeve de Dahlia and it's this gorgeous, it's quite like a sort of bluey pink, but I am obsessed. So I'm gonna start with this and I'm gonna go directly onto the eyelid. I mean, can we take a moment? I still have mascara on from earlier, so we're just gonna leave that there. It is definitely a, a purplier pink than some of her other colors I already had, but I'm gonna do kind of two to about there, and then I'm gonna take a blending brush. I'm gonna take my Chanel eyeshadow brush, and I'm just gonna start to blend. 
So this is step one and it's such a gorgeous color. Reminds me of the purple quality street. If you know, you know. Such a gorgeous color. And with this product, I like to kind of use a brush but then also just tap the edges so you get more of like an organic finish. Again, I'm gonna go in with concealer afterwards but I just want to get a base of the shadow all over. You can definitely shear these down, you can build them up. I'm going to show you kind of the products I'm going to use with it but I'm now going to go in back with another layer. So like I say one of the first things that I think is changing as a narrative very very slowly I might add is the idea that you have to have an agent to book celebrities. So when I first started as a makeup artist everything was about having an agent. Everything was like, you have to have an agent. You've really made it when you have an agent. And I do think 10 years ago, the way agents operated was very much from a place of, we're gonna support you, we're gonna develop you, versus now, in all honesty, I think the way it's shifted is, what can you do for us? It's very much like, unless you're bringing clients, why would we take you on? My take on agents in 2023, if you want to be a makeup artist, a photographer, a stylist, any of those kind of creative freelance roles, is to really think about what are your expectations of an agency and where are you looking for it to validate you? Especially because the reason I went into business coaching was because I could just see how even before I had like one of the top agents represent me, they wanted me because of who I'd been able to get myself. They came to me because of who I was bringing to the table. So I think that's a really important lesson for creatives to learn is when you learn how to be your own agency, you also know what to expect from anyone else who represents you. And I think that's a lot of the work I do now and where I feel very motivated and very inspired is helping creatives be like, okay, when you know how to be your own agent, not only will you book celebrities, but you can hit 10K months, you can build six, multiple, multiple six-figure businesses, you can build collaborations and sponsorship with brands. There's so many things that can happen when you understand the skill set of being an agent. So for example, I saw so many creatives who didn't know how to network, didn't know how to pitch, didn't know how to negotiate. And I was like, oh my gosh, if every creative had these skills, they'd be making so much more money and feeling less trapped and feeling less that they had to believe they needed an agent. Okay, so this color is gorgeous. I'm literally obsessed with this. I think I'm gonna do a look just on the top of the eyes because this is such a statement and I kinda wanna wear like a suit tonight. I'm feeling like a pink eye and suit vibe. So I'm just gonna check that's blended. You could definitely go in with another clean brush if you wanted to. Next product, next product. I'm actually holding the Mario Metallics and I kind of love the idea of this one. Just using my finger actually. Just wanna see, so it kind of has this like pearl, like it's sort of more of like a corally pearl. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in the center. So it kind of brings a little bit more red into the purple. It almost tones the purple down a tiny, tiny bit. But I just like the way it gives a little bit more interest, a little bit more dimension. Oh, I love that. Again, red and purple is one of my favorite combos. And I wouldn't quite call this red, I'd call it like a sort of co burnt coral. Does it even say which shade it is? No, <laughs> um, but it is this one here and I am obsessed. So I'm just taking that into the center. I think as well, people always think you have to do like a light color in the center, but when it comes to color, I really enjoy just kind of placing color where you want to place it versus feeling there's a right way. And again, I think the red just kind of grounds what previously was very bluey pink, if that makes sense. So pretty, I'm loving that. I think you're gonna be excited by the next product. So the next product is one of Joe Baker's uh, eyeshadow palettes. This is called Bake Up. And I'm gonna take this shade, the pink, and just put a bit of matte in the inside corner because I feel like, I like the juxtaposition and the contrast of like a little bit of matte shadow that's pink and the shimmer. So by putting the, the matte pink in there, taking that, powdery matte into the inner corner. Almost like into the first quarter of the inner eye and then just blending with the brush I used originally. So it's not so much like start stop. There's just like, it starts matte and then goes into more metallic. And again, just blending. So how did I become a business coach? Like I said, there were lots of things that were happening in my industry. 
I definitely felt there was a little bit of like a dog eat dog vibe in the makeup artist industry that low key was getting tiresome. I think I was also getting to a point where I was like, I've really done everything I wanted to do, which is amazing. And I feel so proud of that. So I know there was a lot of people that wanted to know how I had been able to book celebrities without an agent. I've had agents and booked myself clients, big A-list clients without agents. And I feel like people were asking me and I was like, I feel like I'd be really good at explaining how I did this. Even pre-COVID, um, I came out with a course called Level Up, which really stemmed from, I'm so tired of this narrative of like, there's only room for so many people in the industry. In the industry. I was like, no, we're gonna change that. I'm just gonna curl my lashes and add some more um, mascara. So th it started with that, being like really tired of that narrative and being like, no, there's room for all of us. And wanting to kind of, whether you wanna call it spill the secrets, like, talk about how it really is in the industry and share what I did. Slowly but surely, people were purchasing this course and being like, oh my gosh, this is, this is literally changing how I see the industry. This is changing my approach to being in it and that turned into coaching. The thing I love so much about coaching is like, you can have all the information, but if your brain is in fear or scarcity or staying in the thoughts around rejection, it makes sense you're never gonna do the things. So I really think like, first of all, coaching had a big impact on my life. And very quickly I was like, oh, I think this is where I'm meant to be. And definitely felt very inspired by what could come, I think, from having these conversations and really opening up the dialogue around an industry that, again, I think as creators were told like, go spend tens of thousands on makeup school and things like that, where I was like, no, you don't need to do that. You just need to know how, run, how to run a business and book clients. Of course, do those things as well because you want to do them, but you know, universities are businesses too. <laughs> so I feel like that's a big part of it for me as well, is just like changing all the narratives we've been told and making people aware what if you don't have to assist all your life? What if you don't have to subscribe to the starving artist, artist narrative? And I think as well, like the big thing that inspired me was so many clients, Thrive Cosmetics Mascara, by the way, so many clients who I started working with, I realized they'd been in this energy of I'll take what I can get versus I'm gonna go create opportunities, which when I looked at what I'd done in my own career was exactly what I had done without maybe being super consciously aware of it. And even seeing the frameworks of how I was showing people how to do it. Again, I had clients who were in Kentucky doubling their bookings. I had clients in Berlin doubling their bookings, clients in Jakarta doubling their bookings. So very quickly it got very excited. And I remember when COVID, we were able to kind of go, slowly go back to work. And I remember thinking like, I can go back, but I don't want to. Like that, I felt so passionate about the work I was doing that I was like, yeah, I started having to turn down clients that I'd worked really, really hard to book, which was the weirdest thing. No lie, I had a lot of therapy over it because I was like, am I, am I turning my back on something that I work so hard to do? The funny thing is I really feel like I've reconnected even more so now with being a makeup artist and being an entrepreneur because as creative freelancers, we have to reclaim that word. Like I really think, again, when we've been in an energy of like, take what you can get versus go after what you deserve, and create your own opportunities, it makes sense that like that word doesn't feel relevant to us. I failed maths at school, like I wasn't academically smart, but none of that stopped me building a business that I really care about that is driven by a movement and community. A little bit of Chanel uh, sculpting, uh, multi-purpose stick. I like this underneath concealer when I'm refreshing my makeup, just so it doesn't get too cakey. Very waffly chat today, but again, they're things that I just wanna share more with you guys. Like I want you to know about the BTS of what's happening, how I got here and also where things are going. And, and honestly, like I feel like I'm falling back in love with makeup again, which is the best feeling. Like there's no rules, there's no rules. And that feels so exciting. So I still have brows on from earlier. I might do a little touch, touch up later, um, but I'm gonna go with the Shiseido concealer, which I'm still loving. I think this is the shade 202 light or it might be 201 light. Just a little bit. Again, if I'm doing a touch up of skin, like I'm not gonna need a lot of products, but I do think as well, when you're wearing like a really bold, colorful eyeshadow, you do wanna make sure it's clean under the eye, just to, again, make it very intentional where the color full shadow is meant to be. So, and again, you can kind of tidy up a little bit through the eye, but I like the shape. I feel like I'm into the shape and this is just gonna clean up where I put that matte shadow. 
and I'm gonna use it to give a little bit of lift as well. And then I usually just finish with what's on the brush around my nose. But yes, it has been a journey. And I think the biggest thing that has put me off kind of talking about this on YouTube is that I feel so safe in how I show up on Freelance of Freedom because it really feels like my home and I want YouTube to feel like that way too as well. It's the vulnerability of like, oh, being fully me. <laughs> I think that's a big part of it. And also the fact that the biggest change I've had in my own life in the past, definitely past two years, is really leaning into celebrating what I've done and where I'm going in a way that past me would have seen as very egotistical or again, because of the creative freelancer, that background, I was really taught like, no, you, and especially being British as well, I don't know if anyone else feels this who's British, but it's like, no, play down your accomplishments, like accomplishments, like don't own what you've done. And that is something I've done a lot of work around is like, no, I'm gonna celebrate all the cool stuff I've gone, I've done. Be in the energy of like, wow, this is so, exciting and I'm so ready for more challenges. So I am gonna do a little bit of bronze and another thing I did pick out of my stash actually, who remembers this? You can't get this anymore, so please don't hate me. <laughs> it's the Avon Colors of Love Sunkissed Cushion Bronzer. And I actually picked out a deeper shade today than the one I normally use because I was just curious how it would sheer down. This could be where I ruin the entire makeup, but again, you've seen the vibe is let's have a go. Let's see what happens and uh, we'll go from there. So again, it does look quite dark in the, what would you call this, the cushion, I guess. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this, so you can see it's a little bit deeper than what I would normally go, but it still has a kind of glaze to it, which is what I always loved about the, I think it was called Sunflower, the color I used to use. Now again, the pinks I've gone for are a lot cooler toned, but I just wanna give myself a little bit of warmth because I've been wearing my SPF and I feel like my skin is a little bit paler at the moment because I've not seen much sun in LA. It's literally been the same weather as what we've had in England. I went full into coach, I think last year, 2021 was it? Was maybe my first full year of coaching full time. It has been a journey. It has been a journey. And I just feel so excited now as well to show other creative freelancers. Like once you learn how to double your bookings, I want more creative freelancers becoming entrepreneurs and really getting comfortable in like the title of CEO and building empires and building movements that they really care about. Okay, so that bronzer I felt just brought a little bit more freshness back to my skin. Cream blusher, I am still obsessed with, uh, what is it called? Milk makeup work, but I might try and find something else. So for cheeks, I'm actually gonna take this palette by, uh, I think it's Rouge. Yeah, by Rouge. I'm gonna take this shade, which still has a kind of slightly cooler, tawny pink tone and I'm just gonna take a little bit of that again I don't want it too much blush I think this palette is for lips and cheeks yeah I just want to take a little bit of that kind of rosy tone into it so for lips I'm gonna start with Monica Blunder this is her lip crayon in I think it's Marlene um, and it's a really nice kind of peachy lip and I'm gonna mix it with the pink because I feel it's gonna be too jarring on its own, but I just want like a light base. And I really feel it like when I do lips, and this is how very much how I used to do it on celebrities. I would do it kind of like <laughs> three, I would always make in custom colors. I was very bad at like just using one color. So I'm just smushing that all over first as like a base layer. Now I wanna bring some more pink back in and I'm gonna take Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, of course. And I'm just going slightly over my lip line. And again, my favorite trick, going kind of heavier on the lower lip just in this area and then smudging it outwards with my finger. Just so you get like a soft diffused look. Let's add a little bit more pink in now. I'm gonna take the same shade I used on my cheek and I'm just gonna press that onto the lip. I still think my finger is one of my favorite ways to apply lips because it just always makes it that little bit softer looking, like that little bit more smudgier and like lived in versus looking like a perfect lip. And then if you want to, you can go around again with the lip pencil, but I'm just gonna make sure I smudge. I'm into it, I'm gonna add a little bit of powder very strategically. Okay, Chanel brush, some Westman Atelier powder. I'm still obsessed with this. And I'm just gonna use that to set kind of around the chin, a little bit under the eye. It's kind of here is where you really notice the difference when you just take it around here. All the sheen that you want pops in a really ethereal glowy goddess kind of way 
but you've also pushed back anywhere you don't want the sheen. So it feels very balanced. So that is the finished look. That's my date night look. I may change up earrings. I feel like I'm gonna wear some tailoring. I do love a really, like a bold color with a black suit. That feels really good. So that's probably what I'm gonna wear. But thank you so much for watching. Um, if this has been helpful, again, if you have any creative freelancer friends, please send them my way. If you're enjoying the makeup, let me know what you're using at the minute and what you're loving the most. And I'll see you soon for videos. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>